Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the program. This is Love Letters to Pam, and I'm your host, Jack Church. I hope you've had a good week. I know for all of us, it can sometimes be a bit challenging as we continue to navigate life without our loved one. Maybe it's that special job you had, that home, that pet. Again, if you've never listened to the program before, we know about loss here, and we talk a lot about it. Now, my idea on loss is, though, is trying to help you move forward through your loss. And that's basically me just sharing my stories with you. It's called Love Letters to Pam. It's my thoughts and my experiences following the loss of my beautiful wife of 37 years, just a little over two years ago now. Now, you may be saying, hey, it's been a little over two years. Is it getting easier? I've answered this question time and time again. Yes and no. I still miss her. I still think about her every minute of every day, it seems. But I'm learning to function. Again, the key, if you've never listened to the program, we talk about moving forward. We don't necessarily move on. Our loved one will always be with us in our thoughts. But we do have to learn how to continue to function in this world. So that's kind of the idea of the program. Also, I want to again thank all of you who continue to be monthly contributors to this program. And I want to encourage you that are listening that if you find it in your heart to contribute, we certainly do appreciate that. I've got some big ideas for the future, but I still need a little bit more funding. So any help is always greatly appreciated. And again, if you can't give, we certainly understand. I mean, gas is what, five bucks a gallon in a lot of parts of the country. So I certainly understand that as well. Now, I want to talk with you about oh, a couple of three different things. First of all, this week for me has been somewhat interesting in that I'm learning more and more. And I've talked about this a little bit in the past that I'm having some issues with focus. Now, when I say focus, I'm talking about being able to say, be given a project or a task at hand and follow it through to the end. Now, I used to be pretty good at this, especially when I was in television. I was a television weather guy. I would go in every afternoon about 1.30, 2 o'clock, start putting the charts together. Then I would start building the maps, thinking about the story I was going to tell. I always said it's a weather story that you're presenting to the viewer. And then I'd go out there and do it four or five times a night. No problem, right? Well, I found of late, though, that when I'm given a project, I'm no longer in television, that sometimes I have problems following through. Now, it's not intentional. It's more of just, it doesn't get done. My focus just isn't there. And it's really been kind of bothering me lately as to why I can't seem to take on large tasks and complete all the steps that are going to be necessary. And I'm sure some of you can relate to this. So I started researching it a little bit, and I started reaching out to some professionals to talk with them a little bit about this. And what I discovered was those of us who have experienced a tremendous loss in our lives, in my case, the loss of my beautiful wife, maybe in your case, sadly, you've lost a child or you've lost a spouse or you did lose a terrific job, things like that. We can actually suffer from PTSD. That's, of course, post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, this was often thought only associated with those in the military who'd gone through some terrible things in times of war and in the battlefield. But we're learning more and more that even grief can trigger some forms of PTSD. And I've pretty well determined in talking with, I, I've got a counselor friend that I talk with from time to time, and I hope that you've got somebody you can speak with as well. And they said, yeah, what you're describing, this lack of focus, this lack of follow through on things can certainly be a sign of PTSD. And it can last for many years after the loss of a spouse or a loved one. Now, I know you've heard about this as well. The deeper the love, the deeper the loss is felt. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, my son, in fact, mentioned one time, he goes, you and mom were attached at the hip and we were. We did anything and everything together, from the bedroom to the boardroom, you might say. We were just that way. And so it's like a part of me has been just taken away. And some of you listening, you've experienced the same thing. So we're dealing with this PTSD. Now, I hadn't thought about it a lot until recently. And again, it was just really bugging me. And so I asked this counselor person, I said, well, what should we do? 
how do we deal with these signs of PTSD that have been triggered by loss? And they said, oftentimes, there's not a lot you can do. It may take years for it to correct itself, and sometimes it may not. But what you can do is lighten your load a little bit, lower your expectations. So if you've got a lot of things on your plate and you're trying to do them, and for some reason in the past you could get them done and now you just can't, it's okay. You need to forgive yourself. And you need to find maybe simpler tasks to take on. And that's something that I've got to give a lot of thought to as well as to, well, maybe I need to look at different areas of my work and look at how I can be more productive. Maybe it's in another area. Maybe it's a completely different field. I don't know what it is. But it's also frustrating. And I know if if you've experienced this, it is. It's like... Why can't I do this? Now, a perfect example, Pam and I always loved movies. I love watching movies. But ever since she left this earth, I'll turn on a movie sometimes. And I know it's a really great movie that I love. And my gosh, shortly into the into the movie, I'm drifting off. I may be over on the computer looking up something. I may start cleaning the kitchen. I just don't have the focus that's needed. Now, a half-hour show, yeah, I can usually go through that. But even some of the series now that Pam and I so enjoyed, I find it a little hard to stay focused. And again, it's part of that PTSD that they're talking about. Now, all of us who've experienced any kind of loss, this grief thing, it's feelings of, you know, distress and bereavement is kind of one of the big words they like to put out there. And in some people, it does diminish over time. And I think we'd all agree that in time, that that sense of loss is not as strong or as dramatic, but it's always there. It's always there. I've told this story a million times, but I'm going to tell it again because we always have new folks who are dropping in on the program that in the first few months after I lost Pam, I would kneel down next to my bed at night. And I would start praying for everyone that I knew that had lost a loved one. And the list just got longer and longer. And then I would start crying. And I would cry so much, the sheets would literally be wet with tears. Now, I can say now, no, not as often. I can pray now as a general rule without having, you know, a flood of tears. There's still going to be a few. But that's what I'm talking about. It's slowly a little better, but it's always there. Now, I ran into a professional football player who put it best for me one time. He's actually someone who listens to this podcast. He lost his father. And he talked about after he had heard some of our programs, he said, you know, he says, what I figured out is that loss is something like this. He goes, there was a time when I'm playing in the NFL and I'm out on the field. And he says, I got tackled hard. He was a running back. He says, I got tackled really, really hard. And if said, I felt something snap in my knee. And he said, that is such a scary thing for a pro athlete to feel, that snapping in the knee. And he says, I couldn't move. And he says, I was literally crying on the field, 225-pound running back, crying on the field. He's in terrible pain. He says, they lift him up. They take him off the field. He goes over to the sideline. The team physician comes by, and he goes, oh, man. He says, you've, you've blown out your knee really bad this time. He goes, we're going to need to get you over to the hospital. And they do. So he goes to the hospital, and they have to do surgery to repair the knee. And he says the knee is repaired. He then goes through rehab for several months. He misses the rest of the season, he tells me. But then the next season, he's back out on the field. And he says he was able to perform again. But he says, you know what? He says, I never forgot that injury to my knee. He said, even though the knee had been rehabbed and I was back on the field, he said, I still had that kind of a pit in my stomach that it's still there. It still happened. There's still that scar left on my knee from the surgery, but I'm able to still perform. And he said, maybe not at the same level I did before, but I'm able to perform. Now, can we all relate to that? This loss we've experienced, 
I would love to tell you it's going to go away and never be part of your life again, but it's not. It's one of those battle scars of life that we've picked up, and it's always going to be there. But we, too, learn how to get back on the playing field, and we learn how to keep moving forward. It may not be near as joyful as it used to be, but we really don't have a choice other than to keep pushing forward. And again, that kind of relates to the PTSD. For some, it's going to be much worse. For some, it's going to be less. Again, the deeper the love, sometimes the deeper that PTSD can feel. Not always. Again, every case is going to be totally different. Now, here's the thing, though. Somehow, some way, if we're still here on this earth, we've got to stay on the playing field. Because let's face it, sitting on the bench, sitting on the sidelines, that's never much fun. I know some of you may have never participated in competition in athletics, but just sitting on the sidelines is really bad. For me, you know, I love the game of golf. I would hate if all I could do is just stand on the side of the golf course. I want to get out there and play. Pam was my playing partner. And boy, I miss her. I loved her little short skirts she wore when she played golf. I miss seeing those beautiful tan legs as she makes her way down the fairway. But I haven't given up golf. I'm still out there on the playing field. Now, that's going to transition into another area of something that I want to talk with you about, and that's about our attitude and our ups and downs. And now here's one, and I've heard from several of you. I've had several emails about this. Those of you who are... uh, practicing Christians. And that's me. I'm in that camp. Some of you may not be. And again, we're not here to judge either way. This is just for illustration purposes, so to speak. But in the Christian community, we all have those groups of people or friends who they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is good. We should be. That's right. But they'll come and they'll say, oh, come on now. You know, she's all healed and better and happy, and she's walking the streets of heaven, and she's got that beautiful home ready for when you get there. You just need to be joyful. you got to have more joy in your heart about the fact that Pam is in heaven now, and she's having a wonderful time, and she's totally healed. You need to be joyful about that. you got to get your joy going. you got to just stay out there. Be joyful. Be joyful. Oh, my gosh. Sometimes you just want to slap them, don't you? It's like, I get it. I do. I agree. I know she's better. I know she's healed. I know all that. But I'm not. It sucks being here without her. And I bet you're shaking your head out there going, you bet you. I'm happy for my husband, my child, my parent, whomever. I'm happy for them. But I'm not any happier. And you know what? That's okay. Because oftentimes... That Christian friend of yours who's, they're preaching it, they're feeling it, they're believing it, but they haven't had a big loss like you've had. Have you had those conversations? I have. I'm going to tell you, it's a totally different conversation with a Christian who's experienced loss as opposed to those who have not. Until you've been there, hey, again, let's quote the great Pam Church who always said, until you've been in my shoes, don't try and tell me what it's like. I also saw a movie. Not long ago. Now, this is a movie I actually kind of stayed in tune to it, and doggone it, I wish I could tell you the name of the movie. And right now here on this program, I can't remember it. I will tell you, though, it starred an actor who I like, who I can't remember his name. We'll have to Google it. But he was a uh, – one of the movies I saw him in is where he was like a uh, lobbyist for the tobacco industry, of all things. And it was kind of a dramedy on how he was defending the tobacco industry. So you could maybe look that up, find that movie. It's a fairly new movie. Anyway, he had another movie that came out after that that I watched. And this is one that I watched from beginning to end. And what it was, it was a story of him, a younger guy, like many of us, I think he was maybe in his 40s, who lost his wife. He then wrote a self-help book about how to get through grief. He then went out on the road and gave talks about how you can keep going and go, go, go and rebuild your life after loss. And, you know, I guess to some degree I do that with this podcast as well. But I'm also pretty transparent with you in saying that while I get a little better at times, I'm still not doing that great a lot of times. And in this movie, 
He had this great facade. Everyone thought he was doing wonderful. As you watch the movie, it seems like he's doing fine. And when I'm watching it, I'm going, wow, I wish I could be like that. Well, then finally he meets a woman who then starts to, as they say, peel back the layers of the onion. And then he starts to realize there's a problem with everything that he's putting out there. The fact was he had never properly grieved for the loss of his wife. He had not allowed his, his body and his mind to feel the pain of that loss because he was so intent on avoiding it and trying to tell others how they can avoid it. And here's the deal. It's unavoidable and it's not healthy. I've heard from men who've sent me emails on this program and they've talked about, I just don't think I should cry. Yes, you should. Crying, trust me. Trust me, guys. And girls, some of you may not want to cry. It does make you feel better. I know that sounds weird, but there are times I'll pull up the uh, Ricky Gervais program, The Afterlife, which I've told you guys you should watch it. I'm not going to say you should, but it is so well done. Sometimes I will watch episodes of that, and it will make me cry like a baby, but I feel better because the lead character gets it, and I like that. I like the fact when somebody gets it because it is so, so rare. It's kind of like all of us gathering here, we get it. Well, time's running short. I try to keep these programs short because otherwise people with the attention spans of squirrel, they tune out. Squirrels, they tune out. And I need you to continue to share this program. Please, 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 if you will, I want to take this on a different level. I'm not saying that I'm God's gift to talking about grief and loss. But I do think the messages are important, and we need to get them out there and keep the conversation going. So please share this podcast with others. Encourage them to listen and leave reviews with your favorite podcast provider. So that's about it for this day. I do hope that you can make it a great day. And as we like to say, make it a better tomorrow. We'll talk again soon. Bye now, everyone.